All right, welcome back to the next lecture. In this lecture, you're gonna learn how to fetch JSON data from Flickr. So Flickr is a site where you can share photos and even videos, I think, but mainly photos. And they have a public feed where you can access some of the most recently added photos for the whole site. Now I'm gonna add a link to this page that you can see here in the lecture resources. So you can just click on there and it's gonna take you right to this page. Or you can go ahead and Google for Flickr API and then click on the feeds up here. And then that's also gonna take you to public photos and video here when you click on that. And that's gonna give you the exact URL you need to be able to access that public feed. So that's the URL from which you're actually gonna retrieve the data. So similar to the load function that allowed you to get data from your own server, you're now gonna be able to also get some data from another server. And in this first lecture, we're gonna use Flickr. Now for the purposes of this lecture and the coming lectures, we're gonna use the JSON data format to exchange data between our script and the server. So most of the APIs or feeds in this case allow you to specify that you want JSON as your data format. And as I briefly mentioned before, JSON means JavaScript object notation. So let me now go back to the editor to show you what that looks like. Now the JSON data format is actually not so new to you. You have already used that for other objects in JavaScript. So it's really just the normal JavaScript object notation where you have a key, you then put a colon there and put in the value for that key. Then you can put a comma to separate the next key value pair and so on. Now most of the time you split that into multiple lines so that it's better readable for you and other people. But you've already used this for the animate function for example where you can pass in which CSS properties you want to change during the animation and that's exactly the same syntax. So this is also going to be the format in which you retrieve the data from Flickr. All right, so now let's actually go ahead and make that API call. And for that, we're going to use the getJSON function, which is provided by jQuery for exactly this purpose. So again, this is a function that makes it easier to make such calls for JSON APIs instead of using the AJAX function directly. So we're not gonna use that, and we're gonna use JSON instead. Now let me go back to the browser to actually copy that URL that we need, and then you can store that into a string variable in your jQuery code. So let's say Flickr API URL is this string, and then you gotta append a question mark and put JSON callback there which is gonna make this a JSON P request instead of a JSON request, which is necessary to actually allow you to retrieve data from that different server. So it's not your server, you're not making that request from flickr.com, but you are accessing flickr.com. So again, that's from a different domain, and to be allowed to do that, you have to use the JSON P format, and this is gonna tell the API to do just that. Now, if you want to know more about that, you can Google JSON versus JSONP, or if you're really interested in that topic, you can also let me know in the Q&A section, and I will then try to cover this in more detail later. But for now, just remember that this will allow you to actually make that request to the Flickr domain server. But for now, just remember that this suffix here is gonna actually allow you to retrieve data from that other server, in this case, flickr.com. Now the way we're gonna make the request is we're gonna just call the getJSON method and then put in the Flickr API as our first perimeter. And then the next perimeter is gonna be an object again, which will define some of the configuration options we can have. So we're gonna fill that in in a second. So this is where some of the options go. And you can see which options are available also on the Flickr API side. So when you take a look at the browser here, it's gonna tell you that there's ID, IDs, tags, tag mode, and format. Now we're gonna use the format, tag mode, and tags, and put them into the options in a second. But for now, I wanna go through the basic format in which you make your call. 
So you call this getJSON function here, you put in the URL where you want to retrieve your data, and you put in some of the options that this URL will actually work with. And now remember that this call is asynchronous. So this is going to happen, but the code is still going to move on, and you need an event handler that's going to be called once this request is finished. So once your request was handled by Flickr.com and Flickr.com actually came back with all the data you requested, you can then handle that event and work with that data. So this is also an event handler and you can put that after this call here by using the done function, which is gonna define your event handler function for when the request was successfully finished. So you can put in a function here that's gonna execute for a success. So this is what will be executed if everything went fine. And then you can also call fail here and put in a function which is gonna be executed in case something went wrong. So there was some kind of failure. For example, your URL was wrong or you're not authorized to access that API or something like that. So in the failure case, I'm already gonna go ahead and say alert ajax call failed so that's going to be all i'm going to do in this case and then let's actually go ahead and fill in some of the options here so as you could see on the page there's a tags key which you can use and that's going to specify the tags you want to search for like for example sun and beach and then with a comma you're going to separate the next config item which in this case is going to be tag mode. So you can say any, or you could say all. And I'm going to use any, which means that an image I want to fetch should be either tagged with sun or beach, but it doesn't have to have both of them. And now the last perimeter is called format, and there I'm going to put in JSON. So this is really important for you because you actually want to retrieve JSON data and you're using the getJSON function. So you want the API to know that you are expecting JSON data as your format. Now another very similar format would be XML, but in this case, we're gonna go with JSON. All right, now, so what's really interesting is this done function here. And this actually gets a perimeter, which is the data that the server came back with. Now, the way I like to do things is to actually take a look at the data in the console first. So I'm gonna say console log data, and then that's gonna allow me to see what kind of object I'm getting back and which fields I can actually access in that data. So this is always the first thing you can do with the data you get from the JSON request. You can just log that to the console and look at the object. So let's now go back to the browser and take a look at the object. So I'm gonna open up our page again, and then I'm gonna click on this object here, which is again, open that on the right hand side. And you can see we have this items property here, or the items key with the value array of 20 items. So you can go ahead and expand that. And you can see that each of those items then has an author, an author ID, a date, a description, and so on. And what will be important for us is this media key here we are gonna have the URL to the actual image file. So this is what we'll be using for the source attribute of an image tag. All right, so we're gonna have to go ahead and first access items or iterate over the items property here. And then for each of those items, we're gonna get the media.m. So let's take a look at that in the code. So first of all, I'm gonna call a jQuery function, which makes it really easy to iterate over such arrays or also over objects. And that's called each. So you can just call $.each and then you put in the array or the object you wanna iterate over. In this case, we have an array which is accessed via data.items. So this is the array with 20 items that we just saw in the console. And then we pass a function here which is gonna be executed for each of those items. Now in the case where you put an array here as the first perimeter, this function is gonna first get the index and then the value. So the index here will be zero, one, two, three, and so on. 
and the value is going to be each of those items. Now in the other case where you pass in an object here, which we're not doing now, but in case you're putting an object there as the first perimeter, then you're going to get the key here and then the value. So let's now go ahead and define what we want to do for each of those items. And again, you could also go ahead and then again, log each of those items to the console to see what you're working with. So when you do that and go back to the browser, you can see that item is not defined because I didn't call it item, but value. So let me call this item in this case. And then I can log that to the console and you're going to see 20 logs here for each of the items. And when you click on one of them, you can again see what they are actually made of. So the same thing you saw earlier, you have the author, the description, the media, and so on. So this is the way you can browse through your data basically to get a good idea of what you're working with and how you can access which properties. So for now, I'm just going to use the media.m object, which is going to give me the URL to the actual image file. So let me go back to sublime text here and then work with each of those items. So I'm going to first create a new image tag by calling the dollar and just passing an empty image tag. And then I'm going to set the source attribute to item.media.m. So as you just saw, that's going to give me the actual URL. And I'm going to append that to, let's say a Flickr element that I'm just going to add to the page. So I'm going to go to the index HTML file and let me actually add that yeah, right here, a Flickr div in which I'm just going to add all the images. All right, so let's now take a look at the new page and you can see we have some images here. So these are all the images from Flickr, which were recently tagged with either sun or beach. Now let's say I don't want to have all the 20 images, but instead I only want to have five. Now I can do that when I go back to the code and then in the each function, the way this works is actually that once you return false in one of those iterations, then the whole call to this each loop here will terminate. So when I say if index equals four, so for the fifth item, I'm going to say return false. And then that's going to terminate the whole call to the each function. So the further items will not be looped over anymore, meaning that I'm not going to create an image tag for those and there will be no item appended to the Flickr div. So that's just a specification about the jQuery each function. Once you return false, it's just going to stop all future iterations. So when I now go ahead and take a look at this in the browser, you can see it has been reduced to only five items. And also this was just the most recent photo, but now we have one more already. So there will always be different photos here, which were recently uploaded to Flickr. All right, so this is how you can also reduce this to five images or something like that. And of course you could greatly improve the design. I didn't add any design to this at all, but you can make a nice image gallery together with what you already learned about while creating image galleries basically. So using animations and DOM manipulations or also Lightbox to create a more beautiful image gallery. So this would actually be a good opportunity to also combine this now with what you have learned in the previous sections if you want to go ahead and do that. Now otherwise that's it for this lecture. So you've learned how to also get data from a different server, in this case from flickr.com using the public feed where you can access the most recently uploaded photos and you can filter by some tag. So you can also try out different tags there and then of course get different photos to see what other photos come up with other tags. All right, so thank you again for watching this lecture. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. It's going to be a fun lecture where you're also going to deepen your understanding of Ajax calls from jQuery.